thank you for joining us again for another episode of Rebuilding the Black Family. We're thrilled that you're joining us. You know, the success of any community is greatly impacted or determined by its relationship with money. Our understanding of money, how to use it, how to build wealth, are essential elements of community development. And so on this episode of Rebuilding the Black Family, David Grant will be discussing this important topic with our guest, Eshe Simba. Stay tuned. Thank you, Brother Carl, for that beautiful intro. And yes, introducing our last and final guest, Eshe Simba, who is a licensed insurance broker, financial advisor, and founder of Sugar Plum Scrubs, a skincare and self-care brand selling natural sugar scrubs. Eshe works alongside families and youth in Ontario to increase financial literacy, encourage financial planning, and build wealth. She specializes in life and health insurance, as well as retirement and education savings plans. And it just so happens that she's my cousin. So... (laughs) Cuz, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am, to share your knowledge. So we want to get right into it. So Mm -hmm. today we want to talk about black people and money, black people's relationship with money, right? Yeah. You work with black people. You work with black people when it comes to money. So I want to know in your experience, because I understand, especially when we look at the virtual generation, right? You're able to work with people throughout Ontario, throughout Canada, just wherever, what has been your experience working with black people when it comes to their handling, their understanding, just their interaction with money? What's been your experience? Well, the thing about um, money mm-hmm. and especially black people is you can't we can't talk about black people without referencing, you know, um, our history. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, for the longest time, we were not managing our own money right and it's only recently that not only have we been able to manage our own families but now we're actually taking a look at the different financial tools and resources that are available to a lot of people Mm -hmm. i find that when i talk to a lot of my clients they just feel like they're behind Hmm. there's a lot of um confusion around uh, money around the tools we use to make money around Mm -hmm. um around investing Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of um i would say it seems almost like um a cloud that kind of covers Mm. money making and how money works and then of course there's that piece around trust Mm -hmm. so um it's hard to let go of something that you work so hard to earn Mm. and it's hard to risk it if if that makes sense yeah um by trusting um different organizations to actually handle, hold, Mm -hmm. and um, manage our money. So that trust, Mm -hmm. I'm going to presume it ties into our history of of constantly just being betrayed in so many ways, shapes, or forms, especially when it comes to how our wealth has been extracted from our respective countries back home, you know, throughout the Caribbean, but definitely back home in our respective home in Africa. Um, Would you say that's where, I guess, the the historical antecedents are of that mistrust. And now in the present day, we just struggle to trust something that we are only from what you're saying, recently coming into interaction with on a more regular basis and having a somewhat a bit more control of, is that what you're saying where some of that trust comes from the trust issues come from? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, it's only recently that we, as a community have gotten adjusted, I think Mm -hmm. to the concept of money being separate from the actual resource. And how, how recently would you say if you could put a number to it, just ballpark, (laughs) I would say that when we transitioned from, um, being African people to being, um, here in, I guess we could call it the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Um, we went from owning land, owning, uh, ag- you know, having agriculture, having um, cattle, mm-hmm. right? That was our indicator of wealth, yes. right? Um, how we managed that and how we managed our relationships with people, those were our indicators of wealth. Yes. Um, 
of course, there were certain resources that had more value, i.e. gold, mm -hmm. or I, I believe in some um, cultures, you know, you have the cowrie shell, for example. Yes. Those were the indicators of wealth, as well as um, jewelry and yes. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you transfer over, and now we're in a society where we have capitalism and we're dealing with paper money. Yes. Um, now we're dealing with digital currency, and I yes. feel like we haven't had enough time to really process that, especially considering we didn't really get reparations for the amount of time we spent enslaved yeah. as human beings. Mm -hmm. And um, now we're, we're finally being able to make a living. Mm -hmm. Arguably, we're not being paid what we're worth. Yes. And at the same time, we're having to manage with concepts that make no sense to us, whether it's inflation, whether it's um, investments, whether it's, you know, stocks versus mm -hmm. bonds versus, you know. So it, we have a lot of catching up to do, especially when it comes to how much wealth we have, what we mm -hmm. believe we're worth. So, mm -hmm. that, so that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. It's true. So we're, 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 we're playing catch up. We're playing mm -hmm. catch up. And so we need, so when, I, when we talk about our relationship with money, um, it really starts with our relationship with ourselves and how yeah. much we value ourselves. Yes. And um, we're learning. So we're yep. in this place where we're learning. And it's a shame that we have to be in a place where we're learning when there are so many people who have been taking advantage of monetary um, tools for so much longer than yeah. we've been able to. Mm -hmm. If I were to give you an exact time frame, hmm. <sighs> I don't think I would give you an exact time. I was frame. about to say because I think you, you you gave us a pretty uh, a pretty good understanding of where that time frame would have essentially originated, yeah. right? Yeah. From the time that we were dislocated and came here to the Americas, or mm -hmm. you know, even back in place in Europe, like Portugal or in Lisbon. Yeah. And we were stripped of our physical connection to wealth. Exactly. And now we are come to this not only foreign, but essentially pretty new and for, and I guess made up yeah. understanding of wealth, yeah. i.e. via paper money. Yeah. Um, essentially, we're talking that's around 16, 1700s yeah. where it around originated, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's um, I think that's pretty good, you know, summation of what that looked like. Yeah. Um, already really good points. And I really appreciate it. one piece mm -hmm. I want to go to is now talking a bit more about those tools because you said yeah. there's been tools that we're trying we're slowly catching up on yeah so you may have some black people tuning in like what, what are you talking about i thought we just go to the bank <laughs> make a transaction and we yeah. go home buy yeah. a house get a mortgage and then yeah. die like what are these tools now that black people should be knowledgeable about in today's day and age so there are so many um and to sum that up i would say this um not only do we have the banks that we go to. Mm -hmm. We also have, you know, insurance companies. Mm -hmm. We have, um, you know, mortgage brokers. We've got, um, oh my goodness, so many, so many different, let's say, institutions mm -hmm. that offer, um, that offer, let's call them plans or contracts in which you can store your money and or invest your money. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, you have things like loans. You have, mm -hmm. so the types of tools that are out there are plentiful, Okay. right? And they vary based on the person. So depending okay. on your financial needs, mm -hmm. depending on your risk tolerance, depending on your um, financial situation, mm -hmm. right? There are tools out there that can benefit you. Mm -hmm. What we need to be able to do as a community though, is we need to be able to um, turn to each other and to begin with, actually be honest about our financial situation. Because mm. that's kind talk of where it starts. That. Yeah, talk more about that. What do you mean, be honest? Um, I find, so I, I work with a lot of clients who, um, in terms of their financial situation, either they start off a little bit confused as to where they should be, like where exactly should I be in relation to my age or my mm. um, career and so mm -hmm. on. So there's a bit of confusion there. But then there's also the confusion around, you know, um, the secrecy. I, I think money in our community is often shrouded in secrecy. Like we're not supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like our parents don't share, for example, you know, um, what it takes to be able to pay rent. You mm -hmm. know, how much are they making? Mm -hmm. How much are they um, putting towards their resources like groceries mm -hmm. or 
um, you know, b- the bills. Like yeah. these are things that we're not really having conversations about. We should about. be transparent about. And I feel like yeah. we should be. I feel like we should be more transparent about how much it costs to live. Yeah. But also more transparent with like our community in terms of our friends and so on to let them know where we're at financially. Mm-hmm. What are we spending our money on? Where are we investing? What investments have worked? What mm-hmm. hasn't? Because if we can have conversations like that with each other, then that um, honesty translates to yeah. having conversations with these big quote unquote institutions. True. Right. True. We so often it has to start go in- internal. Exactly. Yeah. Why, often we go into banks and, you know, we want to present a particular image. And I think images are our downfall because if yeah. we're not in a in a positive financial space, we can't get the help we need if we're not being honest. It's true. It's true. But that comes down also to trust. Being able to yep. trust financial institutions and being able to trust um, agents, brokers, and so on mm-hmm. to give us the best financial advice regardless of what lines their pockets. Mm. Um So, yeah, Mm -hmm. so we have a little bit of, um, there's a piece of us that, you know, maybe there's some shame there. Maybe we feel like when we are around other people, um, other communities, we see so much wealth, just like so much access to wealth, whether it's resources and so on. Yeah. And because we don't have that, maybe we have a bit of of, insecurity of of insecurity around that. some shame, yeah. And then you listen to all of our music. Like, I was... (laughs) Talk to Guilty me. pleasure. I was listening to yeah. Cardi B in the car and she's uh, talking about how much money she has, yeah. and how she fixed her teeth and blah, blah, blah. Um, but what we rarely hear is how did you go about Doing creating that. that wealth? Yes, we see you reaching this so-called fame, Ooh. right? Okay. And we, we see you, okay. um, you know flashing all this money and this is something that happens in our community Mm -hmm. we make it and then we don't tell anybody you know what the financial tools were for us to get there because it's like we either don't trust them exactly right or for two we're individual we're individualistic in that sense where it's like almost that meritocracy well i pulled myself up by my bootstraps i worked hard yes you black people need to do the same exactly rather than sharing those yeah. tips you have to share and 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 i think it's important to be um and and i don't i don't want to just use celebrities as an example but i'm mm-hmm. just thinking in terms of our community and how we see wealth or how we perceive wealth yeah we always talk to like in our youth we know okay if you can make it in sports or you can make it in music yeah then you're going to hit the big like you're going to hit the jackpot yeah you're done. You know, you you've made it. Although that's a very small percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a very small percentage. Yeah. Um, and we're in high school. We're we're thinking that you know the creative space is where we thrive because nobody really tells us. You know, this is how much you can earn if you are a doctor, or mm-hmm. this is how much. This is what it looks like. Yeah. To succeed in tech, yeah. this is what it looks like. We don't hear that type no. of thing. People aren't sharing that. Yeah. People are sharing it more now. Yep. But um, I know back when I was in high school, oh, yeah. there wasn't a conversation Same about, with me. Yeah. right? We weren't talking about that. Yeah. So what I would say is we definitely need to have more conversations about, you know, what were our challenges with mm. resources? I remember hearing my grandfather talk about investing back in the day and mm-hmm. some of the investment woes that he might have gone through. Yeah. Um, I remember hearing my my aunts and, and, and uncles talking about the businesses that they started and mm-hmm. um how they started a business and not just what um, business they owned, but how they went about networking in Mm -hmm. order to make those connections. Those are the things that I hear from my parents. And so I'm very lucky to have that um, influence in my life and see how money moves um, in that way. And also um, having enough confidence in yourself to try Mm -hmm. to earn um, a living. Yes. You know, being, what it looks yeah. like and to be independent, what it mm-hmm. looks like to um, invest in your business before you're seeing yeah. um, returns and so on. No, so. that's that's you raise a lot of good points that, you know, actually, when you're talking about, for one, what we associate when, you know, what, who, who we associate um, having money with. Right. Yeah. And what fame, what wealth looks like to us. Yeah. And we look at the celebrities, we look at the mm-hmm. athletes, but when you actually look at it and when you actually, you know, when you, when you read, when you, when you listen to these interviews, mm-hmm. they may be rich, but they're mm-hmm. not wealthy because mm-hmm. I, I can't remember what show I was watching, but the rich ones are the ones who receive the checks. The wealthy ones are the ones who cut the checks. 
right? Yeah. And when you think about it, it's true. The ones who manage the athletes or yeah. to manage the musicians. Exactly. They're wealthy, right? Yeah. yeah. The distribution labels that manage the artists Absolutely. are wealthy. The, mm -hmm. the artists are rich. Can they become wealthy? Well, of course, if they yeah. make financially appropriate decisions. Yeah. But then I also hear you saying on one hand that black people, we struggle with trusting one another yeah. because it may start internally, which actually is going to take us to our other question. Mm -hmm. Struggles with maybe some of the uh, maybe internal sort of self-hatred mm. that we're projecting onto others, mm -hmm. right? But then... On the flip side, you know, it all, there's also members of our community who don't even trust one another, to be honest, about our internal yeah. struggles with money. Absolutely. So we don't, str we don't trust the banking institutions. Mm. Okay, that's fair. But we don't even trust one another to exactly. help one another. Exactly. So in hearing you say, what I hear you saying is that you even have some clients who come to you. You're supposed to be the one, if anybody, that they trust. Mm -hmm. They trust you. And there is even some of that struggle to be honest about the financial situation where you may have to tease some of that out to exactly. say so and so come on now like exactly. let's talk about this so now it's not yeah. just our community that oh, no, of has course not that no. like that hesitates th that way because of course i'm in a position where i'm asking you some really personal questions things that maybe you're not um used to talking about yes um i've had clients who um and it really just comes down to like financial um the psychology of like finance yes right? yes and, you know, you specialize in the psychology of psychology. Yeah. Whereas over on this side, you know, it's, it takes talking to people to learn how they see money and how their mm -hmm. relationships with money are formed. And mm -hmm. so I've talked with a lot of young women who are very, um, um, who their mothers have pretty much taught them that they need to be the only person who knows anything about how much money they have, because mm. in the long run, if something were to happen with their child and their spouse or their partner like were to have um you know issues in terms of uh their relationship and were to somehow um end up uh how do i say this were to end up you know battling for custody for example yeah 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 right their their um the way that they've been taught to handle their finances is to handle their finances completely separate from their spouse. Yes. Yes. Which on the one hand I've is like, my okay, family too, right. Yeah. You know, on the one hand it's like, okay, yeah, you should be independent when it comes to your finances, have a separate bank account, have mm -hmm. all of those things. And I, of I respect that. Yes. But without the communication, you also kind of limit yourself to opportunities to grow your wealth by virtue of having your partner yeah. be a part of that process, mm -hmm. whether it's um, tax planning, Right. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that transparency um, with your partner and that communication with your partner could allow you to learn other ways of, of um, earning yes. income. I know a lot of men tend to be more inclined, um, more risk inclined, more yes. inclined to take risks, yes. to be um, to seek out, you know, ways to make money, mm. whereas women tend to be the savers. More conservative. Right? Yeah. So when we talk about like rebuilding the black family, right, yes. we have to have um, uh, a bit of, of patience, I guess, and grace with one another Yeah. because there's room for both the saving and the conservative. So that's a healthy balance. Yeah. That's a complementary relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you can have both of those things and be communicative and um, learn from one another, mm -hmm. then it really... At the end of the day, if your relationship does dissolve, which ideally we would hope it wouldn't, yeah, but like, you would have both yeah. learned something. Exactly. Um, but to leave a situation like that and only one person has been benefiting from earning or, or making wealth, it, nobody's happy yeah. at that point. So, So um, oh, I, had a, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, ah, I know where I'm going. Um, so that I think is a nice segue into, um, my next question. When we think about, I guess, those barriers to creating wealth, to mm -hmm. handling money, right? Yeah. Um, what would you say are internal and external barriers? And before you go, when I say internal, I sent you what I'm talking about. I used an example, you know, one, um, when I think of myself, when I think of, you know, some, some of my family members, even my friends, we, we many of us talk about this this fear, as I would even say, I, I would dare to say a pathological fear mm -hmm. that exists in our community when it comes to not wanting to let go mm -hmm. of any sort of money or possession. Yeah. 
even if there's a chance of it doubling back and you gain it back with interest, yeah. right? Yeah. I know I've seen it with my parents. I know I've seen it with, you know, uh, my in-laws. I know I've seen mm -hmm. it, you know, you know, amongst our family members, some of them who, when they see, let's say, my wife and I making certain financial decisions that take that risk and we mm -hmm. invest in that, there's that hesitance, like, but, but what if? Yeah. The what if, right? Yeah. So that I can see is being an internal barrier to really advancing your money because, well, I, I'm comfortable with being it staying here. I'm mm -hmm. complacent. Yeah. But then that leaves you stagnant. Yeah. So that's when I'm thinking internal barrier, that's where I'm going. So what, what are some more internal barriers? Or maybe you can add on to that as well as external barriers. Um, I would say that um, hmm. oftentimes, okay, so definitely there's the fear yeah. around investing in something because, you know, you're feeling like you're going to lose something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a justifiable fear because people are losing um you losing money, you losing wealth. Lo People are losing every day. Of course, of right? course. And it's a process that um, we go through. And so w what I would say to that, if, if there are people who are concerned about losing resources, is mm -hmm. this. If, um, and, and remember I mentioned, we're a lot more comfortable with tangible wealth. Yes. Right. We're a lot more comfortable with, you know, purchasing a home because we can see you that can we can see feel it. it. We can touch it. Yeah. Um, we're more comfortable um, with starting a business, especially starting one on our own I was because, you know, we feel like we can rely on ourselves. Yeah. And that's what we did back home. Right. Exactly. We, we you started businesses exactly. back in country and absolutely you, you could see the money, the transactional. Exactly. Relationships. You can go. Yeah. You can go. I've I've. You can go to Africa, you can go to, you know, whether it's Kenya, Tanzania, you see plenty of people who have course, yeah. their own businesses who are, um, you know, networking in order to do that, who are investing their money into their business. Yes. Um, but it's their business. Exactly. Yes. So the thing is, is when you do that, there's a risk you're taking. Mm -hmm. um, and often because we are willing to take that risk, we're able to also see the reward. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Um, if you're a farmer, you know, you can't sell the cow before you've purchased the mother of the cow, it's right? True. Like yeah. you can't sell the cow before you've bred the cow, before mm -hmm. you fed the cow, before mm -hmm. you've made sure that the cow is healthy. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing for investing in almost anything. Hmm. And I think we need to start looking at life through the lens of inv investments, right? Hmm. Through the lens of what does it look like when you are um, pursuing someone in a relationship. So let's go there. Um, if you are pursuing a relationship with someone, whether it's a friendship or a uh, partnership of some sort, you do your research, mm -hmm. right? You want to know things about this person. You're going to ask questions. It's true. You're going to do. It's true. You're going to do your uh, what they call your homework. You know, yeah. Your, your, yeah. Your car facts. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're going to look it up, yeah. right? Um, and we do this with our, you know, when we buy our. Uh, devices like mm -hmm. our phones or yep. things like that has the best gonna, review all of that exactly yep. so you're yep. gonna do your research you're gonna ask somebody maybe for their advice you're gonna turn to your friend and be like what do you think of this guy i've mm -hmm. just been, i've been talking to this guy for this long these are the experiences i've had this yep. is what i've learned what do you think oh what's his ig let me exactly. search him up <laughs> do, do, yeah right yep. so we yep. know how to invest mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. very straightforward i like that when, when we yeah. invest in um each other as relationships and things go south oftentimes we're like oh you know, we're blaming ourselves for it or we are blaming the other person, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so what I would say to people who are thinking about investing is start thinking about investing in all aspects of your life. When you do your research into something mm -hmm. and you ask the right questions and you are um, engaging with people in a way that is meaningful, that allows you to build relationships, build connections, mm -hmm. that's that's an investment. You're investing your time. Yes. Your time is money. Yes. We know it's this. It's true. It's true. So... Um, when, when that relationship or friendship or partnership falls flat, oftentimes we're able to pick ourselves up and say, you know what? Um, I did what I needed to do mm -hmm. to um, figure out if this was right for me. And because it isn't right for me, that's when I leave. That's when I exit. Yes. So we need to know when we exit. Ah, right? okay. We need to know when do we leave the situation? When is the situation no longer valuable for us? Mm -hmm. um, and because we're so hesitant about letting go... It's true. Right? Like you it's mentioned, true. yeah. Um, that's where we get into trouble when we're investing. So whether it's a house, whether it's a car, whether mm -hmm. it's a resource, I came across a young man the other a couple months ago who, um, you know, had purchased a property. Mm -hmm. And he's seen what the market is doing right now. And, you know, the economy is in a bit of a, I would call it a 
right now it's very choppy. We don't know it's going up, it's going down. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. And he sold his house. And some people would just kind of hold on to it and hope for the best. Yeah. But he decided, okay, no, I'm selling this. I'm purchasing something else. And he moved on from that investment. Mm. Now, whether that investment was going to somehow quadruple in four years doesn't matter. Yeah. But he decided that he's going to place value where he's like yeah. where he places value is what yeah. matters he more took to that risk and he, he was took a risk to deal right. with it yeah. when he purchased the house and to begin with he was taking a risk mm-hmm. when he and he didn't do that by himself because he had advisors yeah it's he true. has mentors yes. and so um this propensity to try to do things on our own um and mm, hold on be, to things just because that's an internal right? barrier 100 that, that yeah. individualism yeah yeah, yeah 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 so that type of a thing um we need to let go of that um asking questions and being willing to be embarrassed is mm. the equivalent of starting a business and being willing to ask people for their business. Mm. I can't Pride. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have that. No. You're trying to make money. There's no such thing. Mm. You're trying to make money. There's no such thing. Yeah. You, we see billionaires losing billions of dollars, mm-hmm. gaining billions of dollars. They're constant. Okay. Let's not say billions, but maybe millions. Millions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's because they're seeking out advice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're seeking out advice. They're taking risks. And when the risk goes flat, they get out. Yeah. And they ask for advice and they're connected. So it's it's really a matter of being willing to take risk, but also being willing to be honest with yourself about yeah. um, connecting with people and asking for advice. So what are some external barriers now? So we talked about the mm-hmm. internal, now external. So yeah. let's say you have a yeah black youth or black mom, black father, mm-hmm. black family, right? Yeah. yeah. They say, hey, Eshe, you know, this is what's happening. We're, we're ready to do all of that. Yeah. But then there may be some external barriers Mm -hmm. that they may not have anticipated. Maybe you've seen, right, that you're going to try to anticipate for them, Mm -hmm. especially when we think of us as black people and the countless external barriers we've had to face. What, in your experience, have been some of those external barriers with um, that our people have to anticipate or, or, you know, may Mm -hmm. come across? I think um, the one example that I'll use here has Mm -hmm. to do with our income. Okay. Right. Um, I find that oftentimes we will take positions and um, uh, let's call this an external barrier where we're, we're compa- we do a comparing thing, right? Okay. Where we're comparing um, our life to what we're seeing, whether it's on social media and so on. Uh, so that's an internal. Yeah. But the external is we are working for companies that don't necessarily value us. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, when we get to the table and we're having that interview, what should be a negotiation isn't a negotiation because we're coming to that table pretty desperate. Uh, Right. I think I know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're not asking for the pay that we deserve. No. um, And we're definitely not going to be offered it because that's not in any business owner's best interest to pay you what you're worth. worth. Yeah. So there's that. So we struggle with that. And Mm -hmm. I find a lot of the young people that I work with, they're like, where's my money going? I have these expenses and the expenses are absolutely reasonable. They're not overdoing it in any capacity. Mm -hmm. They have these expenses, but when they compare that, we contrast it to their incomes. Their income's just not enough to accommodate that. Mm, Yeah, that's an external, yeah. Um, So I would call that an external factor. I would also um, say that I, I had a conversation with a lady the other day who... Um, basically told me she's been working at the same place for 20 odd years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's pretty much tired of it. She wants to get out of there. So let it go. She won't. This goes back to your... Right? She your won't. Point. And and it's... We have to be willing to change our positions. Um, mm. This, this I, let's call it loyalty piece. Mm-hmm. It's not doing us any justice. Mm-hmm. Um. I know, for example, uh, family members of mine Mm -hmm. have left positions after every five years. Because you're constantly, there's this process of renewal you have Mm -hmm. to go through. You can't... um, So I'm not crazy for doing that. No. (laughs) Okay. No. So I'm like, I'm getting the itch, right? No, this is a life journey. Yeah. Right? This isn't, you you don't get your dream job and then just sit there. Mm. You have to do things. You have Mm -hmm. to take risks. Whether it's traveling, whether it is um, starting a business. Mm -hmm. Start, something like starting a business, you may not be ne- necessarily interested in owning your own business, but mm-hmm. starting a business can introduce you to um, how people interact with society, what society, um, how society views people who um, create businesses or in- income opportunities for people mm-hmm. versus people who are making, um, who are, you know, career oriented. And yeah. There's nothing wrong with being career oriented, mm-hmm. 
But if you want to have a better idea of how the world works, how your employer is thinking, what um, contribution you make to that business, it'd be wise to do some research and, and see what other ways you can contribute to the economy. Mm, so what void you can fill with yeah. whatever respective exactly. business opportunity exactly. that comes Ex about. Okay. Exactly. And then it's about, um, um, and I think we were talking about external factors because I can definitely, mm -hmm. I can ramble. No, it's <laughs> no, no, you're you're on <laughs> track. You're good. You're good. <laughs> when we think about these external factors, one of the things that comes to mind is like time management. Mm -hmm. um, we've been conditioned to believe that our best management of our time is spending the most possible time working. Wow, wow. I beg to differ. Wow, yeah. I beg to differ, and I beg to differ for the reason what that. What would be your refute? Yeah. Um. Yes, you can earn money. You mm -hmm. can. Spend your time earning money, but if you aren't spending your time spending your money, i.e. investing your money in something uh, that you value, mm -hmm. you're wasting your time. So people who are about this hustle mentality, you know, especially, you know, us as black people, oh, we got to hustle, I got to hustle, I got two, three jobs, I'm yeah. working here, I'm working yeah. here. All that time they're allotted into working to make the money. They're losing out on time in investing the hard-earned money that they have. Exactly. So not only investing your money, but investing your time in learning. So, mm. yes, I'm a financial advisor. And I can tell you all the different ways that you can use your money mm -hmm. in different financial instruments. Mm -hmm. But what I cannot, well, I can tell you, but what I, can't encur what I can encourage you to do, but I can't force you to do, mm -hmm. is actually go out there and live your life. Learn something. Wow. Go somewhere, learn a different way of using financial resources. Mm -hmm. um, we are heavily invested in the West heavily invested in North America, heavily mm. invest, invested in the United States. We're in an interesting time. And when I traveled to um, the other side of the world, yeah. I was our introduced. Motherland. Yeah. yeah. Not only our motherland, I was introduced to these other economies that are thriving. Oh, you're not talking about just when you went, you know, to various countries in Africa. You're talking about even when you went to Europe and all these exactly. other places. Exactly. Okay, okay. I spent time in, for example, Qatar. Yeah. Oh, you um, were a Qatar. very limited amount of time. Okay, okay. But I was introduced to the fact that these um, countries that the West has for a very long time, let's call it demonized yes. by virtue of, I guess, their chosen religion. Yeah. They're doing very well financially. Oh, oh they're doing exceptional. I have some people that are in the yeah. that Gulf region. Yeah. Yeah. And while a lot of us, you know, we're heavily, heavily invested, like we are have our assets are not diversified. No. We are heavily invested in the US. Mm -hmm. We are heavily invested in Canada. Yes. Things are shifting. You know, mm -hmm. China is where we get all of our resources from. Is it not time to do some Mm -hmm. You have to do some, it's time to do some reading yeah. about these other economies that are, mm. that we are dependent upon. It's true. Just because, look at your toys, look at yeah, your clothes. We're very vulnerable. Yes. We're very vulnerable. If, if we can't walk into a store and buy fast fashion from China, where are we going to get our clothing? Mm. It's true. It's true. Where are we going to, and, and if we're relying on other economies for oil and gas, right? Mm -hmm. When we have this whole situation in Russia, mm -hmm. you see how, um, and this situation being the war that's going on between Russia and, and Ukraine. Ukraine. Yes. Um, there are a lot of um, economies that are dependent upon Russia mm -hmm. for oil. Yes. And this inflation thing that's happening to us is, um, is related to that. Mm -hmm. We're seeing gas prices skyrocket. skyrocket. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great time to start doing some research on what exactly is going on mm -hmm. and how we can diversify our own assets to put us in a place where um, we're not just reliant solely on one economy. Okay. That's excellent. That's excellent. That's all I would say there. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying go and try to invest in Qatar. That's not what I'm saying. No. I'm saying do some research because there are growing economies that we can be invested in. What I hear, And what I hear you saying is... Black people stop having a provincial mentality, right? Stop thinking locally. Stop yeah. thinking. Yeah, we're not a local econ We're not a local world anymore. We're a no. global world. We're yes. all interconnected. Yes. So you can't be, um, you can't be just a citizen of a one particular country. No. You no. Can't. It's it's irresponsible. Yeah. And I guess only, and you can't only think that the respective place where you live, i.e. in the West, mm -hmm. Canada, the U.S., maybe even the U.K., mm -hmm. 
that that is how everybody else in the world operates. No. Because it's true no. when you say, when you leave those places, you know, I even think, and this is kind of sort of related, but not, I guess it is sort of related. You know, my wife and I, we went to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we stopped off in the Philippines. We had a very long layover, right? Mm -hmm. And we stayed at, um, we stayed in the Marriott, right? That was there. And the Marriott there, when I say that, that's a five-star hotel. <laughs> you know, out here, you'll go to Mississauga and say, yeah, it's a four-star hotel in the mm -hmm. Hilton. You go in, there's not no four-star yeah. hotel. But you don't know that yeah. if you've never left yeah, exactly. Mississauga. You don't know that if you never left yeah. Ontario. Yeah. But when you, when, when you are going to places and they say five-star, Mm. When they say they're going to dine you out. Now, unfortunately, we know some of the exportation of the locals. Oh, yeah. that, there's a whole issue there. But my point is, it's just expanding your mind. When my wife and I went there, I said, hold on. This is what the other side, this is how they live. You know what yeah. I mean? Or part of some of the members, yeah. how they live. And when you see that, when you see other things, you know, that play out in terms of in the various economies. Yeah. yeah in Indonesia, in the Philippines. And yeah. when you go to the other parts. Yeah. It helps to expand your range of possibilities. Absolutely. So when you come back to the financial realm, you're saying when you have the ability, if you have the opportunity or the accessibility to travel or just to read up yeah. on places outside yeah. of those places, if you, yeah. even if you do nothing else, yeah, it opens up the range of possibilities, especially when you hear from sisters like yourself, you say, listen, I've done it. I can tell you right now, I can be an ambassador to say this is... Not all, you know, this is not the only thing that you can be, i.e. Yeah. in Canada yeah. and the U.S. So I think that's yeah. important. You're helping black people understand the range of possibilities and keeping up with the times. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because I think sometimes we as black people struggle with being stuck in the past and reliving the glory days where we, yes, we had kingdoms. Yes, we had infinite wealth and all of that, right? Yeah. It's important. We need to recognize that. But that wealth was not measured in the same way that wealth is measured now. That's it. I would strongly argue that um we and and i guess it's just another piece it's yeah. another maybe internal thing we have yeah. to start reimagining wealth in Very terms good. of what we value and what yes. what matters um in the western world we ha we don't value relationships as much as we should no um whether that's friendships platonic yeah. friendships yes. or um our relationships with our elders yeah oh my goodness it's imperative those are the things that we can't put a dollar, a sign, dollar sign And it's not on. tangible, no. per se. Yeah. Exactly. But if, when I, when I am, when I go 20 years down the line, and I think back to the conversations and the relationships that I've been able to build with my grandparents, mm -hmm. those will influence my future decisions in ways that are paramount. I would encourage people, um, it starts with, Definitely self-value because yes. the relationships that we have are important. The relationships that we have will lead us to connecting with people and asking questions. Yeah. Um, so when I think about how I want to look back on my life. Mm -hmm. So, for example, maybe when I'm 60, 70, mm -hmm. um, the stories that my grandparents have told me, um, the experiences that I've had with my family and with friends, mm -hmm. those are the things that are of extreme value to mm. me um and in order for those things to have value i have to have had experiences with them mm -hmm. and those experiences will come in the form of um trying something new engaging in activities mm -hmm. and i, I mentioned engaging in activities because oh now i'm gonna jump off on a little bit of a tangent go ahead, go when ahead. i look at the elders in our community um how they spend their retirement mm -hmm. it's very sad it because is. they just sit at home. I know. It's true. So that's another thing with our community, yep. you know. They sit at home and they have these dreams of, you know, traveling to Jamaica. Because, of course, that's where my background is. Oh. So I'm going to live in Jamaica when yes. I retire and I'm going <laughs> to travel. Um, saving your travel for your retirement. is detrimental. You're not going to do it. No. You're tired. Yep. You have worked your whole life. Yeah. You are likely dealing with some sort of illness mm -hmm. or injury by that point you have probably just attained the amount of money you have finally envisioned for your life and then even then not to spend that that whole this whole lifelong thing about conserving your resources mm -hmm. it doesn't just go away when you turn 65 no you're still gonna have that same uh, mentality so i would encourage all young people 
to focus on building not only experiences, but learning opportunities. Okay. Right? Excellent. If you seek out learning opportunities, you seek out experiences, you seek out networking opportunities. Um, once you get to retirement age, mm -hmm. you can sit down and tell your stories to whether it's your grandchildren mm -hmm. or have something to look back on or all the mm -hmm. photos in your space and so on. Mm -hmm. um, other communities I've found will be a lot more active in retirement age. It's true. Whether I, it's physically active, yep. which is also very important. As well as you see the Chinese walking, doing their walks, their Tai Chi. You see the Indians yeah. who go to Brampton and Mississauga. Yeah. They're doing their walks, their community gatherings. Yeah. And it's those true. community gatherings are a big piece. Yes. So when we talk about, you know, it's very important, of course, to advance your career. Very yes. important. We need the financial resources and we're mm -hmm. at a bit of a disadvantage. But it's also important engaging in the physical activities yeah. where you should be investing your time and In invest your time in creating community networks so that when you turn, when you're in retirement age and you've yes. lost your spouse, you still have community. You still have community. Wow. That, and that's all part of wealth. Uh, you know, that's and, wealth building. That's wealth. And you know, that's that takes building. us to our end because I think I want you to just give us even a, a couple just to add to a list. So, um, you know, just to, just what are some non-negotiable items that need to be on every black person's list when it comes to creating wealth because mm. because you, you've really helped i think reconceptualize what wealth looks like wealth we oftentimes think are just simply assets right having land and things along those lines that's solely what many black people have been sold to believe that's that's wealth but you're saying but there's also friendship wealth there's also that emotional wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have a brand not just in skincare but self care. Yeah. So me and being a therapist, there's mental wealth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Being a, being able to have that sustainability. So what would you say, comprehensively, or at least not comprehensively, but just some that you would add to a list of wealth of how to create wealth amongst Black people? What should Black people add to that? So you mention um, we usually think about wealth in terms of assets. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those assets do not come to you, um, without relationships. Right. Okay. So, um, I, I highly suggest that one invest in having land. Absolutely. Okay. I, of I highly suggest that one invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, I highly suggest that one invests in the stock market. I mm -hmm. think it's important to know how money moves through the economy. Of course. That's one of the ways that it does so. I, I would say um, do your research into digital um, digital, digital currencies. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a digital economy. Mm -hmm. It would be irresponsible to not have some knowledge of what money um, is used for. I know we, we hear about um, the digital art. What is it? I've lost my words. Um, I'm trying to think of it as well. No, yeah. it's gone. I'm okay. just going to let it be. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to me, I'll say it. But yeah. um, definitely do your research. But beyond just doing your own self-research, ask people questions. Mm. You can't learn about everything on your own. And mm -hmm. you can't invest in everything. Reduce that pride. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So have conversations with people in order to figure out where your investments should go. Mm -hmm. Um Non-negotiables in terms of, and, and if I were to use what tools that I particularly offer people, mm -hmm. I would say you have you have to have your basics. Mm -hmm. If you're building a life, if you're building um, a family, mm -hmm. um, you want to protect your family. Mm -hmm. So How you need you to that? have you need to have things like life insurance. Mm -hmm. That's just that's a non-negotiable. You should have it from when you're young. No more GoFundMe pages. No, <laughs> no more GoFundMe pages. No, no. Buy no. life insurance. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also definitely you have your bank accounts. You have your um, savings. You have mm -hmm. your um, and let's say this. You, you of course when you purchase your home, mm -hmm. you know you you have things like a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You might not purchase it outright. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. I find a lot of people are hesitant about things like loans. Yeah. Um, have education savings plans. Hmm. Use tools that um. And I, it's interesting because I can say all of the different, I can say buy stocks. I can say buy bonds. I can mm -hmm. say invest in, in, in cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency or ETF or whichever. Yep. I could say make sure that you get dividends, but it depends on the person. Because if you mm -hmm. are a very low risk person, mm -hmm. but you have a high income and you have a lot of wealth, you can possibly earn just enough by investing in assets that give you dividend income that yeah. might be sufficient for you. Yeah. Um, so what I would say to that is you need to speak with people. 
And so that mm. really comes full circle. Speak to a financial advisor, whether mm-hmm. you're going to work with them or not. Like as she's simple. Speak with one. Because yes. if you don't speak to anybody, yes. you're making decisions in mm. in a bubble. Mm. And in order to speak to somebody, you have to work through yeah. your trust issues. Yeah. When it comes to not just people, but even institutions. Yeah. And in order to help even yeah. on the external piece for you to work through some of that mistrust. This is where the financial advisors come in yeah. to help make you feel not alone in yeah. that process. Exactly. You can't do all, all right. the research on your own. Yeah. So you need to rely on other people. Agreed. And it's in the same way as the relationships you take on in your personal life. You cannot, um, for example, you cannot have a family on your own. No. So you're going to have to rely on somebody. Although sometimes... they're trying to prove you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> even, even if <laughs> yep. even if you try to do it on your own, you, you still, still need, need community. There's somebody that's going to be there who's yep. going to help you through that process. So yep. what I would say mm-hmm. is if you are in a position where you are looking for financial wealth, yes. you need to get in touch with somebody who can help you. Ask for advice. Okay. Lean on the people around you mm-hmm. and know that there will be challenges okay. you don't become a millionaire overnight yeah um your first investment is not could potentially be your mm-hmm. game changer but at the sure. same time it might not be and you have to be comfortable and confident in that thank you cuz mm-hmm. for those words of wisdom mm-hmm. thank you everybody for tuning thank you. in and viewing this you heard it here first financial wealth is one part of wealth mm. We have to understand wealth from a holistic stance. Exactly. As she gave a very beautiful overview of what sort of tangibles you can take away from this to invest in yourself as well as the greater community. So please and thank you. Like, subscribe, share our podcast, Mm -hmm. and we'll see you next episode. It is the truth that does set you free.